how does an IDS actually detect an attack? So let's get into that. So input to this IDS system is in the form of records. Don't confuse them with TLS and SSL records. Records is nothing but a bunch of fields. And what do these records do? They identify actions for a network or a host. So for example, it can a record can have many fields, subject, object, action, exception, condition, resource usage, timestamp, and so on. So for example, this is a record which says Alice is the subject. She accessed this object run.exe and what did she do? She wrote into it and while she wrote no error happened that is exception condition and she this resource was of 140 kilobytes and she accessed it on this date at this time. So that is what this is telling. So this is a record that you are generating and passing it to the IDS for inspection. There are essentially two types of detections. One is signature based detection. Another is anomaly based detection. We'll get to that shortly. First, let's look at signature based detection. Like the name indicates, you are essentially looking for a pattern that is a signature. And this is an invariant characteristic that translates to a set of rules that matches the structure of a known attack. For example, if you are trying to capture sin flooding, the pattern is you are seeing a lot of sins and no corresponding acts. So this is the pattern you try to capture. We didn't cover this, but this is another attack called a buffer overflow attack, where as part of this attack, you will see an argument with a long argument to a string function. So this happens as part of programs. And in this, whenever you are making a call, and if you see an argument to that call, which is very long, then there is a chance that this may be a buffer overflow attack. So in this type of detection, you maintain a database of such signatures and whatever records you get, you process these records and try to match them to the signatures to detect intrusions. So the big disadvantage of the system is you require previous knowledge of an attack. In other words, you need to know what is the signature of an attack. So if the attacker alters the attack slightly whereby the signature is not matching he can get through so that is what this means may miss variance of a known attack because he has altered the signature this can also generate false alarms like in any de intrusion detection system they can be false alarms the idea there is to keep this percentage very low and because you're doing lot of this uh, type of processing the intrusion detection system can get overloaded in contrast to signature based system, anomaly based detection works as follows. It develops a baseline for a normal behavior and it will flag any activity that deviates from it. So for example, in lot of URLs you are accessing, there is a specific distribution of characters. But now if you are accessing a URL that has some very weird characters in it, which doesn't normally follow the norm, then you think something suspicious is happening and it can raise a flag. Similarly, the keystroke pattern. So a given user, you may observe that he types keys in this particular way. And let's say later you see that it's following a very different pattern. Maybe it's someone else trying to log in. Similar to how often you check mails, how often do you log in, all this form the baseline. This baseline profile is statistical. It is built over time using machine learning and data mining techniques. Now, the advantage of this is you can detect a new attack because it is something that is not conforming to normal behavior. So you don't really need to have a signature in place. But the problem is that an attacker can train the ideas to accept activity as normal if he knows what is happening uh, internally and this also has scope for false alarms. Most ideas combine both the signature and anomaly based analysis. Here is a pictorial representation of an anomaly based system. So you observe day one, day two, some pattern like this. So this is the typical user profile. 
but suddenly on day 15 you see this unusual behavior where this has always been less than the others and suddenly it is more then you will say something unusual is happening so in intrusion detection systems this detection accuracy is a very important metric what it means is in case there is an intrusion did you sound an alarm if you sounded an alarm we call it a true positive if you did not sound an alarm even though there was an intrusion we call it a false negative ideally you want this false negative percentage to be zero that is when an intrusion happened the number of cases where you did not sound the alarm should be zero similarly if there was no intrusion and still you sounded an alarm this is called a false positive this also we want it to be 0% because there is no intrusion you should not be sounding an alarm and no intrusion no alarm sounded this is an ideal case that is called a true negative so you want this false negatives and false positives to be 0% what does a detector with 0% false negative can you think of a detector that always gives you 0% false negative so when is a false negative a problem there has been an intrusion and you could not detect it so what you need to do in this case is tell every thing is an attack or an intrusion that is say it is an attack always in this particular case your false negatives will be 0% because you are always sounding an alarm similarly a detector with 0% false positive will always say there is no attack so that way you can achieve a 0% false positive but this is not good behavior because there is cost to doing something like this so for example when you say it is an attack always and attacks are very rare so for example there are 100 events of which only one is an attack then 99 times you are saying there is an attack when there is not an attack so your false positive percentage will be 99% which is not a good thing the same logic applies here as well so a good detector balances the false positives and false negatives because a false positive and false negatives have costs what is the cost of a false positive that is where there is no intrusion but you are sounding an alarm well the cost of a false positive is that because there is no intrusion you are sounding an alarm someone now has to spend time digging into the, all the records to figure out what has happened so this will result in a sysad having to spend hours to check whether it is an attack or not similarly there is a cost of a false negative where what does a false negative mean there is an intrusion and you did not sound an alarm then you have to spend thousands of dollars in clean up in fact your ideas did not do its job so that is even bigger problem so i said that it has to have a good balance between false positives and false negatives but what is a good balance so let's see so here is a detector that has a false positive rate of 0.1% and a false negative rate of 1% so again let me just tell you what a false positive means false positive here means no intrusion but you are sounding an alarm maybe i'll just write alarm and false negative means there is an intrusion and you are not sounding an alarm so what do you think of this detector is it a good detector well it depends so let's see this example let's say there are 1000 audit logs of which one is malicious in other words 999 audit logs there is no attack whereas in one there is an attack now when we say expected false positives that means that there is no intrusion but it may sound an alarm 0.1% of the time so 999 times there has been no intrusion but of this 0.1% it may sound an alarm so this is roughly about 1 so you may have one the sysad has to look at in detail to figure out what is happening so this per day one attack per day the sysad may be able to manage now what is the expected false negatives per day there is only one that can be malicious of this one 
there is a chance that you may not sound the alarm 1% of the time that is about 0.01 so if you kind of map it this turns out to that you may have missed 3 attacks a year this also seems okay but now let's change the scenario where we are dealing with 1 million audit logs per day of which one is malicious okay so the rate of attacks here is very low but you are generating a lot of audit logs. So in this case, the expected false positives per day with the same percentage, if you did the calculations, it is about 1000 false positives per day. In other words, there has been no intrusion, but it said there has been an intrusion in 1000 cases, which the sysads will have a very difficult time managing thousands per day. Whereas the expected fall negative per day, that is 1 into 1%, this is again 0 0.01. So this is 3 attacks per year. This is also manageable. So it depends upon the rate finally. So the base rate of malicious activity is very low. Like in this particular case, the false positives also has to be super low. Otherwise, the sysads have to deal with a lot of headache.